In this video, we're going to look at the axis of symmetry of a hyperbola. Now, an axis of symmetry is a line that divides a graph into two equal halves. And so with the parabola, which, we've, which we investigated a while back, we said that the axis of symmetry was the y-axis itself. Now, we are busy with a hyperbola. Now, the axis of symmetry of a hyperbola is quite interesting because there are two of them. So, would you agree that this line over here splits the hyperbola into two equal halves. So I've drawn this line over here. Now we can see that on the on the bottom side and as well as on the top side, we've got two equal halves. Okay, so that first line that I've drawn is gonna be the first axis of symmetry of a hyperbola. And the way to know that it is an axis of symmetry is if you had to take this half over here and fold it over that green line, well, it would give you this image over here. So that's what a symmetry line is. It's like a fold line or a mirror line. Now the other axis of symmetry for a hyperbola is this one over here. So this new line that I've just drawn is over here. Now that's another axis of symmetry for a hyperbola because if you had to fold this part towards that purple symmetry line, you would get this part over here. And by the same way, if you had to fold this part towards the symmetry line, you would get that part over there. So in summary, a hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. Now we need to know how to work out their equation. So out of the four different graphs that we've looked at, what would you say those lines are? Would they be a exponential graph, parabola, hyperbola, or maybe, just maybe, they are straight lines. So we can see that they're straight lines, and so we know that the general formula of a straight line is y equals to mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. We said that usually we find the gradient first, but now with these symmetry lines, it's very easy because the this one's symmetry line, so this one going up like this, that one always has a gradient of one, so we can go fill that in straight away. Now, who of you can remember how we used to find C? Well, well done if you said substitute, right? And we've seen this in all the graphs that we do. Whenever we have one letter left, then we should substitute. So you need to find a point on that purple line. Now, the point that you can use is this one over here, because we know that the X value at that point is zero, and the Y value is negative two. So we'll go for in negative two into this equation and the x value is zero. And so what you'll see is that the c value, because this is zero, is just going to be negative two. And we said that for a straight line, the c value is also the y-intercept. And we can see that it's going through negative two. And so the equation of that purple line is going to be y equals to one x minus two. And now lastly, we're going to look at the the red one, which is the other symmetry line. So that's also a straight line. So it's y equals to mx plus c, where the gradient of that one, you've probably guessed it, is just going to be negative one. And that's, what nice, that's what's nice about these symmetry lines for a hyperbola, is their gradients, we already know that. Then to find c, you would do substitution once again. But hey, that line also goes through this point. And so we can substitute minus two in the place of y, zero in the place of x, and what you'd find is that the c value is also going to be minus two. And therefore, the red lines equation will be y equals to negative one x minus two. So hyperbolas have two symmetry lines. One of them has a gradient that is one, and the other one has a gradient that is minus one.